that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are you still okay with this? Yep. Alright. Alright. Hello, uh, my name's Kirk Reese. I'm going to tell you my story about trying to report corruption in the military and the political system of Canada. I'm a ranger since 2010. I joined in the ranch Saskatchewan with my father, thinking we could help uh, give back to our community because we were both successful. And, uh, you know, it was a good job for us. We basically trained break forces how to survive worst case scenarios of survival in the bush. Uh, and we did rescues with people that are lost, for example, boats, mushroom pickers, people on snow machines that broke down, stuck in slush. And, you know, we both had snow machines and quads and boats that we could help out. The Rangers have been around since 1947, I believe. Uh, our main goal is to protect Canadian sovereignty. Well, that's changed quite a bit in the last few years. But my story starts in the Ranch from 2010 to 2015. It wasn't so bad until we got a, my best friend as the patrol commander, I think it was in 2017 or 2016. I, ask, I actually nominated him because he never really worked. So we always had lots of time to do the ranger stuff, lots of the paperwork and such. And his wife was the chief of the band, the chief Tam Cook Searson. So they were both my son's godparents. And I thought it's get them involved. Uh, they could uh, contribute a lot because she knows the way around. But by the way, in 2015, I reported corruption involving a, a warrant officer making unwanted advances towards a civilian during Opalentis 2015 in the Range. I, I talked to my patrol commander, who was a woman at the time, and uh, she didn't seem too concerned about it. So I talked to the warrant officer who was reg for us, and I said it wasn't a, uh, and she asked me to talk to him about it, so I talked to him about it. I immediately faced reprisal. Uh, they took me off the fires, where uh, just before that, they said I was the best ranger in Canada for fighting the fires, and then they took me off and said they weren't paying me in an attempt to uh, make me quit. Either way, I kept fighting the fires, but just on my own. And when the fires were out, uh, first rain, I went back to my job in, for Slumberjay and uh, Estevan at the time. I had a crew for fixing up uh, a fire. As I was a electrical contractor and contract general contractor all over Canada for major gold corps, Slumberjay, um, Camco, Warehouser, I've had contracts all over the place, so it's obvious we didn't join the Rangers for the for the money because my dad was successful too. But uh, either way, uh, when I made the complaints, coincidentally a few days later, well I guess I should elaborate, uh, the warrant officer told me, Kirk, you're going to get no help from fire, you're going to get no help from police, you're going to get no help from politicians or anybody. So, you just get used to it. <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about. You know, I didn't think it was a big deal. Either way, um, they seized all my bank accounts, took over $350,000. Again, coincidentally, which I knew I would get back because I wasn't, uh, you know, it's just money in the bank. Well, turns out I still haven't got that money back. They lost all records of it but I do have all the records of when they seized all the money. So hopefully, you know, $350,000 is quite a bit of money when you're broke. I left the ranch with $1,000, my five-year-old kid. <laughs> That's That was in 2019, but let's go back to 2015. Reported the fires, I played ball with them, I played nice, and then things were, you know, I was always working, so I was pretty busy. But again, we got paid cash, and I questioned the, the cash as we were signing blank papers all the time. That would open things up to too much fraud. And that's why we have elections every two years in the Rangers for our patrol commanders and two ICs and our uh, sections, section leaders. But um, after Jimmy was elected, I thought things were gonna be okay and they, they would get things straightened out and we wouldn't be signing blank sheets. Well, it got astronomically worse after that. Um, for example, we were on an exercise, uh, voting exercise, 32 people stood up and signed papers that day. Only eight of us went on the exercise. 
32 people signed up that they were getting paid on, on the exercise. I think that one weekend was over $80,000 in cash that went into someone's pocket. <clears throat> I, I stood up and said, well, there's only eight of us going on this exercise. How come we're all, how come we're all signing these papers? Well, we have some extra money in the, in the kitty. We have to get rid of it before the end of the year. I'm like, that's not right. That's, I can't be part of that. But either way, I let it go. I faced a little bit of reprisal there. And I noticed more and more fraud as things went on. And then uh, finally, I just, with a couple of my, set, my people from my section said, Kirk, what's going on with all these papers we're signing? You know, <clears throat> so I went, I talked to the uh, Sergeant Major. He says, Kirk, it's, we got extra money. You know, you're as good as 10 Rangers. You deserve you deserve to get paid more. Here's ten or four thousand dollars. I'm like, I thought I was getting my pay, which would have been about twenty five hundred dollars, and uh, and or my EUR, which is equipment usage rental, like for rates is two hundred dollars a day. It was then, so I thought I'd get that, and I think about one hundred thirty five dollars a day for wages. So I thought maybe three thousand bucks I'd get. Later on, I found out I got three th or twenty five hundred dollars deposited into my account. So basically, they gave me an extra fifteen hundred dollars, or no, four thousand dollars. But when I went to talk to Jimmy about it, he says, "Are you happy with your your payment?" And like, yeah, because then I knew I had him for trying to bribe me. So I posted it on Facebook that night and said I bought an extra uh, global or thermal imaging camera. For a thousand dollars, because I got paid too much, and Jimmy immediately told me, "Don't you ever say you got paid too much?" <laughs> I'm like, "Well, I did. I thought it was only a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. I didn't know it was four thousand dollars extra." But either way, I I felt uncomfortable taking that money, but I started keeping a lot of notes, and it turns out uh -huh, when I get to Comox Military Police, <clears throat> hopefully I'll remember that. Uh, uh, when we started in the Rangers, it was $100 a day for a quad or a snowmobile or a boat or whatever, plus our wages. And then it got one from 100 to 150 to 200 finally. But I found out through the Comox Military Police that in 2008, the rates were $200 a day. So we started off getting half of what we should have got. Someone was pocketing a lot of money. Uh, just so happens the chief had, was a liberal nominee. And, uh, you know, Jim told me that uh, he has to be the patrol commander and it would look better on him if he was a patrol commander for his chief's re-election as a liberal nominee. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? He said, well, he has to be a patrol commander to get this $16 million from Trudeau for a wellness center. I'm like, well, you better win the election. <laughs> well, that was in October is when we were supposed to have the elections. But I, I reported to the... Uh, military or uh, RCMP ombudsman, some some the, the fraud and corruption in the RCMP and the military, which they didn't investigate. So I told the uh, commanding or patrol or sergeant major that I reported this to the ombudsman, and he immediately suspended me for a year and told me to get my personal effects in order <laughs> before I could be. And I have the messages from him saying, "Well, can I can I be in the election? You know, like what's going on." So October 15th, I think it was, I was suspended as soon as we finished shooting with our brand new Tika 308s and I got the top shot. The top shot is the one that leads to the Remembrance Day Parade and they couldn't have me doing that because they were trying to get me out of the Rangers. So they had the, some other, the other patrol commanders reshoot and they, they were able to fudge some numbers. But either way, they took my guns away that day and they kicked me out. And then uh, the, the Sergeant Major wasn't there, but he came back in November, December. And I said, Sergeant, uh, can I have meetings with you? So I showed him the meetings, or I went to the meetings and I says, look, I can, I have this evidence I want to show you about the corruption with Jimmy and Tammy and the Rangers. And he says, you're back in, you're immediately back in. <laughs> so there was a patrol meeting that weekend and uh, I, I wasn't allowed to go because I wasn't, they wouldn't answer my calls. And I, all my sections asked me, are you, are you in Kirk, are you out? I have the emails that everyone asked me what's going on. I was like, well, they didn't know I was trying to report this corruption. So uh, either way, the uh, Sergeant Major, Kirk, you have to get this out. You have to 
get this to the proper authorities. I was like, okay, well, I started that ball rolling. He says, then he says, you have to wait until uh, Mohegan comes up here. He's uh, another warrant officer. He was coming up on the 17th to um, to solve what our problems were and have a new election for, for new patrol commanders and two ICs and such. I went to a meeting in the in the hotel with him, and he says, "Kirk, you know, you've ruffled a lot of feathers. You've stepped on too many toes." <laughs> and he says to me, "Think of your family, think of your children, you know, think of your babies." I had a baby girl just recently then, and I says, "I am thinking of my family, I'm thinking of my babies, I'm thinking of everyone's family and babies." I was like, "This is wrong on so many levels." He says, "Kirk, you don't have any idea how many toes you've stepped on." I was like, "I don't care. That's not my problem." And I tried to quit. And he says, well, you'll get section, well, section 5F you, which is, you know, kind of like a dishonorable discharge. I said, well, no, I'm not doing anything dishonorable. <clears throat> but uh, I phoned the um, uh, hotline for the mental health, and I talked to a guy in Saskatoon, and he asked me for my uh, service number. I gave it to him, and he's like, did you just join the Rangers? I'm like, no, I've been in it since 2010. He's like, that's bizarre. We have one sheet of paper for your whole career. <laughs> there was one sheet of paper I signed for off Lentis 2017 in Williams Lake when I was fighting fires there. And that's the only record they have of me in the Rangers. I tried to get uh, T4s. They said, well, it's government. You don't get T4s for this. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But, you know, to do my taxes? Well, I can't do my taxes ethically knowing that I'm, I'm making money and I'm not claiming it from, from the Rangers because I can't. Do you swear that... What do you say is true? Well, I couldn't, so I didn't do them because I knew I'd get this money back anyways eventually. Either way, they were forging our signatures or my signatures anyways on pay sheets that were, my son could have probably made a better one on on a computer, but uh, that's what we were used to. I didn't see a, a formal pay sheet until we were on a exercise with Lieutenant Colonel Meads in BC, or Alberta, with Jim Searson and Lizzie Blair. I went into the office and I saw that these other guys in the patrol were signing like legitimately looking pay sheets. <laughs> and I said, oh, look at those. Well, James, the uh, uh, warrant officer was not impressed that I saw those, but there again, I had everything I needed to kind of keep my case moving. We went back to LaRange, that was August, uh, it was right after a, a rescue we did August 28th for Ed Trombley where we got called out for a missing mushroom picker. And uh, we went out there looking for him and then Jim said, well, let's go home, we'll come back tomorrow. I'm like, there's lots of daylight left. They wanted him to die, I think, so that they could get more funding. And uh, I said, what the hell are you talking about? And I went in the bush by myself and uh, another guy followed me. And we were able to rescue him that night, but he would have died that night for sure, is what I was informed. But they wanted to get another day's pay of EUR, which is 200 bucks a day for your quad, 100 bucks a day for your, or 200 bucks a day for your truck, 100 bucks a day for your trailer, plus a wage, plus fill up your truck with gas. You know, pretty lucrative in the ranges, especially the the ranges that are living up north, where it's their only income. You know, and they're protecting Canadian sovereignty. A lot of them can't speak English. A lot of them can't write English, and they're the, signing the same sheets we are for payroll. They'll, they'll sign anything they, they put in front of them because they, they can't afford to not get that money. I understand that. But the potential fraud was just massive, millions of dollars. But, uh, you know, after we was rescued uh, at Trombley, we went on the exercise in Alberta and we came back. That was August and September. And then October we had our, when we got the new rifles, I was, when I came back, I was carrying like uh probably 10,000 rounds of 308 in my personal vehicle for the military. You know, they were, I was okay to, to travel with that much rounds, <laughs> military rounds in my personal vehicle. They trust me enough then. But then uh, when I reported it to the ombudsman, I was picked out. Either way, election came. So we were all supposed to go to this election and they canceled it. They had a, a meeting around a fire like the, the meeting was set for the evening in the Legion. Instead, they hand selected uh, a few of Tommy's friends and Jimmy's friends. Like they got their daughter in there and cousins and people that worked for the band. They're 
and uh, there was one guy that happened to come across and do an exercise and uh, they had an election for me right there and only one guy voted for me to not be released which you can't it's, it's against their constitution to do that you have to be deemed non-effective well they, at one time I was the most effective ranger they said they had <laughs> until I reported the wrongdoing so either way they said nope you're out and the warrant officer came and and I said just so you know I I did call the ombudsman and he says don't call the ombudsman it never goes well for that and I called the IDO the independent disclosure office to report wrongdoing which was my sworn duty to report wrongdoing if you see it they can always prove me wrong right which I really hope they did either way he came and retrieved all my gear so I was no longer a ranger but I phoned I said I wanted to grieve this he says Kirk as soon as they release you you can't grieve anything I said, well, what should I do? He said, we should drive to Edmonton. <laughs> so I got in my, my car and I drove with my son and we went to Edmonton to talk to uh, Billy Bowen. He's in charge of the grievances at CFB uh, Edmonton. I dropped my kid off at another military friend so his mother could look after Kenneth when I went to the, because these are the same people that I stepped on all their toes. <laughs> and I had to go into the snake pit and talk, talk with them. But, uh, so they said this is this is a level three emergency like we can't believe this is happening to you you know i showed them a few pieces of paper just to make sure that they knew what was going on i went to the he says well take a lunch break so i, I went to the legion and had a bowl of soup with all the veterans you know and looking on the wall all the people that sacrificed everything for our country and i was like this i don't think these guys are getting what i'm putting down so i e emailed them a few more things when I went back to base, they were pretty much stepping over their toes. They they were red-faced. This is, well, we phoned your lieutenant colonel, and uh, there's nothing we can do for you. You know, go back home. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is more serious than I thought. I thought I'd be gone for a couple days, you know. I went home, grabbed all my stuff and my, uh, uh, my chihuahua, <clears throat> and uh, left trying to figure this out. And I thought someone would back me up. Everyone's like, what's going on, Kirk? I said, well, I had to report things, you know. I thought, uh, I thought I'd thought i be back home in a couple days. But then I'm getting all these threats. <laughs> You're going to be killed by drug dealers. You know, the, uh, the, war off, or the sergeant major said uh, I was accused of selling drugs. And I'm like, I don't sell drugs. I'm, Jimmy's family was more known for that, <laughs> the chief's family. But... Uh, what, what band was he the chief of? The LaRange band. Yes, yeah, Scott uh, Treaty 6. It's one of the biggest ones in Canada. And there's millions of dollars of, you know. <laughs> but uh, either way, um, so I didn't know what to do, so I took off. And I'm thinking, you know, I went to stay with a friend. How can I, uh, how can I get this resolved? And I said, I said, well, I'm trying to get a hold of the lieutenant colonel. So I email him, were you, or Facebook him, were you aware that I was, had a, dismissed at a fire without an election? You know, of course, he, he didn't respond. So I sent him enough stuff there. And then uh, I said, like, I'm going to go on, I'm going to start uh, going on Facebook. I'm going to go public with this. Bang. I went public. Ten minutes later, I get an uh, email from uh, one of the majors in Esquimo. Where are you? You know? <laughs> I'm like, well, he says, can you come to Esquimo for a meeting with the lieutenant colonel? I'm like, yes, I can. <clears throat> but, uh, or actually, there was a little more before that story. Uh, I'm thinking things are pretty messed up, but uh, my ex, my son's mother, wanted to leave LaRange because so, she was worried that the drug dealers would kill her too because she knows too much too. So I went back and picked her up. And then I came back and we... Uh, went to talk to the lieutenant colonel or sorry before that <laughs> before I went back to the ranch I went to uh, uh, Abbotsford to try to get asylum in the states so I drove through the border with my friends 2017 Denali and uh, I didn't stop at the gates I drove right through them into the states and the uh, border guards came up with their guns on me I'm like I'm cool you know I'm just I gotta get this you know, I want to make sure I cross the border because I don't want to go back to Canada. He's like, what the fuck is going on? I says, well, I'm, I got this weird military story. I'm just trying to report corruption. Showed him a few things. He's like, well, 
uh, what do you want us to do? I was like, well, I want you to arrest me. I want you to, uh, you know, let's get this dealt with. He's like, or and give me asylum. And he says, well, we don't have an assignment agreement with Canada. So he says, can you, um, uh, <clears throat> I says, I can prove everything. And he says, well, we're not gonna arrest you. He's like, well, you have to. He's like, why is that? Well, because I have a 45 in the truck, and grenades, and all my bunch of rounds. <laughs> He's like, no way. Where's the guns? So I told him where they were. And they retrieved them. And then they walked uh, walked them across to the Canada side. And they shook my hand and thanked me for my service and said, get back to Canada. So I drove back, like through the, the proper road. And at the gate, they said, do you have anything uh, we should know about? Any drugs or weapons or in, in the car? I'm like, well, not in the car. <laughs> because they took them, or the truck. Well, we needed to come inside. <clears throat> so I went inside. The first thing they did was take Kenneth away from me. And uh, they asked, who's who's that? And he said, Kirk. First time he's ever called me Kirk, not Daddy. <laughs> so that alarmed them a bit. And uh, they were like, what's going on? I was like, well, I'm ex-military. I'm trying to report this wrongdoing involving Trudeau because, you know, she was a liberal nominee. And that's how she got nominated was by stealing the Ranger money to get support. Like, you know, and they're like, well, well, we're gonna, we're gonna let you go. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, no, uh, like arrest me and let's deal with this. He's like, no, he's like, well, but we can't let you take your kid. I'm like, well, I, I'm not leaving without my kid. So he's, well, how can we prove he's yours? Cause he was only five. I didn't have any ID for him or anything. I said, well, you can phone uh, his mom. So they phoned his mom. I told the message her, was like, they're, someone's gonna phone you right away to verify that Kenneth's our son. And, but she didn't answer because she's a narcissist. So she's probably enjoyed that quite much. So then the RCP is there involved. And they said, how can we prove he's your son? I said, oh, my friend Vic is uh, trying to date the daycare provider or friends with the daycare provider because it was closed then. <clears throat> so uh, he said, what's the number? I said, well, 425 and the number. So they phoned him up and they verified and Vic phoned me what the hell's going on? Is they go, just some weird stuff. But they verified that Kenneth is my son, and he's, they asked him, is Kirk normal? He's like, yeah, he's very normal. Any worries? He's like, no concerns. So he says, okay, we'll let you go with your son. Let you go with your son. I showed them, uh, they said, have you been drinking? I'm like, yeah, I just had two beers, and there's four beer in the back of the truck. Are you on any medication? I'm like, yep. <laughs> Prescribed medication for uh, DDD. Uh, are you under any uh, mental uh, doctor's orders? I'm like, yeah, here's a letter from my doctor last week saying I need to get a mental assessment. And uh, I'm thinking the military's out to get me. And they're like, well, we're gonna let you go. <laughs> so they give me back the guns, all the bullets, shook my hand and said, thank you for your service. We're all in this together. So that's when I knew I was pretty, pretty fucked. <laughs> But either way, after that I'm driving, and then bang, I get a call. I go on Facebook, post a few things. I get a call from the, uh, the Squimo base. And that was like February 18th, I believe it was. Can you come in for a meeting? I'm like, yeah. I was staying at some friends' places in Squamish with uh, Kenneth's mother. So they said, well, we know you're packing. You're carrying a gun. So uh, they sent me an email, will you, uh, allow yourself to be searched before you come in onto the base. I'm like, yep. Yeah. And they booked me a hotel room <laughs> so that uh, Kim could look after Kenneth there. And I went to the base and the same people I accused of were all pacing around me as I'm getting frisked by the military police. The military police says, uh, how's it going? I'm like, good, except for all this shit. <laughs> he says, do you have any guns in here? I'm like, no, nothing. Left them somewhere else and he's like, okay. You're not gonna hurt anybody today? I'm like, no. Nope. He says, we hear you're getting really fucked around. And it's all recorded. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you bet. And the same guys I was reporting, or trying to report for fraud, are pacing behind me. You know, so I walk up and I go to the uh, Lieutenant Colonel's office and, and the Major's there and I had my briefcase. I was like, right on, I'll finally be able to report this. So what's going on? I was like, well, I reported, I tried to report this fraud and corruption. I didn't think he was involved with it. Well, apparently he was. <laughs> Went right to the top. And uh, he says, well, we had a meeting. He's like, I said, what's the main problem? I said, well, you know, it's against the Constitution. The elections that in the Rangers, you know, I wasn't allowed that. And I was, I was like, well, everything is just so messed up. 
that, uh, you know, we have to get this sorted out. He says, well, Kirk, he shook my hand. And there was other people in, in there. I don't know who they were, but they were all army, military of some sort. You know, like, and I, I don't remember who they were, but he's, and he whispered, Kirk, you did everything you were supposed to do, but you were the only one. And that was February, 2019. So I decided, I was like, I got to find a place to, to hide out because I have enough information to be killed to bring down all of these people. Now, now I did, you know, but, uh, um, so I go back to Saskatchewan and I stay at a friend's place. He's ex-military, known him all my life. And we stayed there and I was trying to sort things out. So I'm emailing. Public Integrity Commission of Canada, me emailing Harjit, me emailing uh, Trio, because I didn't, didn't think they were involved too. Well, I get emails back from all of them. We can't help you, you know. Thank you for your service. It's not our department I'm from Trudeau, and I think I'll send you, I have the letters, I sent them to you guys already, but, you know, and then they all say, well, yeah, we'll look after it. Never get a return call. I have recordings of pointing the, their assistance no, I have recordings phoning the uh, uh, ombudsman. <laughs> Either way, they're not going to help me. But uh, uh, they said, well, you have to file out your, fill out your grievances. So I went to talk to captain in, in Saskatoon. We filled out six grievances regarding fake elections and money laundering and stuff like that. And they never went anywhere. They just got sent back. They got sent to La Ronge because they knew I was in BC. And you have 30 days to respond. And they all say, well, you timed out. <laughs> but either way, the captain says, they're going to say you're crazy and probably on drugs. And I'm like, well, I just happened to have uh, eight years of random drug testing because I knew this was coming down the pipe. <laughs> and uh, he's like, wow, you really did prepare yourself. I'm like, yeah. He said, well, you're going to have to get a medical, uh, mental evaluation. He says, it's going to take about six months. I'm like, well, shit, you know, six months I'll be dead. Well, my buddy there just happened to know the the psychiatrist for the military in Saskatoon. <laughs> like, I went to Veterans Affairs and they said they can't they can't help me because I wasn't released yet. They actually gave me four $100 prepaid visas and said, good luck, and I was broke, right? <laughs> so I was able to sell some, some quads and stuff like that to make enough money to survive. My friend helped me out too, but... Either way, he got me in that weekend with the doctor. <laughs> and the doctors, you know, they ask you a, th a thousand questions, you know. And, uh, but, you know, do you think someone's after you? Well, yeah, <laughs> they are. They, <laughs> you know, I have it recorded. You're gonna get killed by the drug dealers, you know. I saw it, the Darcy and P came to my house and said, Kirk, something's gone awfully wrong with you. Uh, the Darcy and P have told us, like, like the Darcy and P said, you're, 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 you have to leave because they like they said I was a drug dealer or an informant. But then the drug dealer comes to my house, who I've known all my life because you know everyone knows who they are. He says, "Kirk, something really weird." The police came and told us you're an informant. Which he says, "I don't give a shit," uh, you know, because they're immune. <laughs> uh, he says, "But I can't control all these other little scumbags, so you know you might want to watch yourself." The police said, "If." Uh, if those little, if these bank game bankers came into my house and I shot them with my 45, I'd be charged with uh, premeditated murder. They said I had to shoot them with a shotgun. That's how weird, you know. Good thing I wasn't paranoid schizophrenic because I would probably set someone over. <laughs> but either way, um, yeah, I knew I was had to leave, so I got got in, thinking I'll never come back, or. They killed him. Like, I was worried about my son. I couldn't do anything about my daughter. But either way, I got this evaluation done. And at the end of it, he said, I don't think, I, I didn't think he was getting what I was throwing down. So I threw a couple of pieces of paper at him of evidence. And he's like, You can't come parachuting in here. I, th I thought you were just some regular crazy guy. I said, No, I have evidence for everything. Uh, I didn't get his, re his report for another month or so, but I came to BC and I drove around all over the place thinking, the worst you know trying to find a place that I could settle down then I remembered my girlfriend or ex-girlfriend uh, lived in on the coastal BC so I phoned her up and I said like, hey I'm trying to retire I got some weird stuff going on in my life she says you should absolutely come here with your son you know and uh, it turned out to be a great great idea <laughs> but a month later I got the 
the notes from the doctor and he says Kirk's a gentleman sounds crazy sounds paranoid test positive for all of this stuff but he's not <laughs> at the bottom of it he says he just has to get his documentation into the proper authorities within two weeks that was in March 28 2019 there is no proper authorities to give my information to you know I've tried CBC CTV global APTN I got so many reporters that I sent everything to and then they're like blocked <laughs> so many politicians at phone did you ever get that sorted out no blocked you know we'll phone you next week blocked I'm talking every party from the Green Party I didn't do uh, what's the name Bernier Maxine Bernier yet I should probably message him but they all take the information and then they block me and it shows that they, they've received them you know uh, the NDP in, in LaRange uh, what was her name uh, uh, she responded by accident when I blanket emailed uh, Trudeau and uh, Jennifer Strachan the uh, highest ranking RCMP member in Canada she uh, she responded oh, she the emails right there but she says oh what's going on how can I help you and I sent her a bunch of stuff blocked and then I see her beside Tommy as she gets the uh, 16 million dollars from Trudeau to build a wellness center you know <laughs> and then they're saying that I'm the druggie you know they're setting me up to be killed is what's going on they paint the picture yeah so I came to BC and I tried to blend in you know I had a thousand dollars to my name I brought my dually truck my my jet ski and my I put it in my John boat with my kids toys and my welding my welder and my tools so I knew I could make a living I stopped at Comox military base and I tried to report it and they took uh, my son put him in a like they were real nice to my kid and uh, they said well we're not uh, taking anything this is way above our pay grade I'm like what the hell am I supposed to do the person says Kirk how are you gonna make a living you should just go home I was like I can make a living anywhere in the world I'm not worried about me I'm more worried about you guys <laughs> you know and this is pre-covid uh, so it was nothing to do with that <clears throat> Either way, I came up here, I went to the RCMP uh, detachment here and I said, I'd like to talk to you with Kenneth, you know. I said, well, here's my, my deal is I have a really bad corrupt story with the RCMP and the military involving Trudeau and a few others. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to be involved with it. You want to leave me alone. <laughs> and they're like, I put the barrel of the 45 on the table. They're like, what the hell is that? I said, well, it's the barrel of the 45. And, uh, um, I says just leave us alone and if the military or anyone asks where we are you got to tell me so I can kind of prepare <laughs> so that was uh, March 28th 2019 or no sorry yeah 29th I think is when I caught the ferry across here but either way a couple of days doesn't matter but uh, and uh, they said yeah we'll definitely warn you and I got along with them fine you know I remember Duncan uh their heads in the apple bobbing thing at the school you know <laughs> mm -hmm. I just kind of tried to blend in and I kept trying to email people and no one would, would help me the military ombudsman says Kurt you know you're not released yet we can't help you well according to the military I was released back in the uh, uh, January 17th when they had that fake election or January 20th I guess they had a fake election and then he took all my gear so I was released but I kept my uh, my shooting glasses <laughs> and my army bit you know, so that way I couldn't be released. Okay, oh, it's, it's storage full. Oh. Yeah. But you're still going? Yep. Yeah, so at least. Or, yeah, so just remind me where I am. I couldn't be released. <laughs> but uh, either way, uh, they did nothing to help me until I was released. And how I got released is. Uh, I gave my gun, my 22 chicken rifle to uh, the RCMP to hold for me because I had to go start a new bank account because they seized my accounts again and the band only pays here in checks <clears throat> so I went to the uh, police station left my guns got a ticket for it and uh, thought nothing of it went and got a new bank account deposited another check which they gave me $200 which they seized immediately again <laughs> either way I came back and then bang they pinged me I went to the police station to pick up my 22 and the guy says how can you store your guns here I was like well because I have a, I'm living in the back of my truck <laughs> I don't have you know 
it's still legal to have them locked up in a truck with the truck locked, but I didn't want to risk it. You know, someone broke in or something, so I did the right thing and took it to them. Well, I'm pretty sure that he pinged my pal and restricted, because then they came over and they found me, not him, but just the other people that were in the know. And they says, Kirk, they know where you are now. And I go, okay, well, let's get this party started. Before this happened, I went and talked to my friend. I was like, someday I'm going to get arrested here, and they're going to take me away. I says, would you promise to look after Kenneth? But, um, and he says, what the fuck's going on? I was like, I just got this weird stuff going on. Um, and then he promised he would look after it. So I went to school and said bye. And then I went to the hospital to say, look, I'm not crazy. I phoned the mental health line, which is recorded. And uh, the police came and they said, what's going on? I was like, I'm trying to report wrongdoing. They went, they sent me in the office and we talked for half an hour and they wouldn't take any information because he, he wouldn't, didn't want anything to do with it. But they arrested me under the Mental Health Act and uh, took me to the hospital. So uh, I'd rather be in a hospital than dead. <laughs> but I wanted, they said, we're going to send you to Vancouver. I'm like, okay, fine, you know, at least then I'd be able to tell my story, right? Well, not in a mental hospital. <laughs> they said to me, Kirk, you're going to... Uh, we're gonna have to knock you out to get you on the plane. I'm like, well, no. I says I've jumped out of helicopters fighting fires and stuff. I'm not worried about fucking planes. We have three of them back home. You know, I've been flying since I was two, like with my dad and all that. And he's no. I says, well, we're gonna have to drug you. I'm like, nope. I don't do any drugs. Don't put anything in there. So uh, they say, okay, well, we're gonna put you in a straitjacket then. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. We're gonna put you in a straight jacket. And they, yeah, go ahead, put me in a straight jacket. I don't care. Just don't drug me. Well, they put me in a straight jacket and then they drug me. And that's against my human rights. <laughs> I woke up two days later in the hospital, in a mental hospital. And uh, they said, how are you doing? I'm like, well, good, let's let's talk to the police. Let's talk to the doctors. Let's get this sorted out. Oh, you still think there's a conspiracy against you by the military? <laughs> I can prove it. You know, how can you prove it? I was like, in my bag open up the bag you know no nope. I had my medications in there which they wouldn't give me the doctor talked to me well we're gonna give you some uh, antipsychotic meds I'm like I don't want any antipsychotic I'm not psychotic I, said, I don't want to be a, like that and they kept threatening me if you don't take him you're never gonna leave here and I'm like well I'm not taking him so you're gonna have a fight on your hands and they said well we're putting that in you have to stay here for 21 days and then you get a review with a tribunal and the, that's the only way you get out. And you have to show that you've been taking your medication. I'm like, I'm not taking any drugs. You know, give me my, my drugs that my doctor prescribed me and, and let's phone the police and let's deal with this. You know, that was the last I seen the doctor for a week or so. And then this other doctor and I'm, I see these people walking around with their, uh, their little music players, iPods or whatever. And I say, hey, can I get my iPod from my bag and my charger? <laughs> that was a good one. Well, my iPod is a, uh, it records voice recorder and just records all my phone calls. And so does my, uh, my, my USB charger records everything. And my pen records everything. And my, <laughs> uh, my keychain records everything. And I had that on most of the desks and everywhere I was talking. And I was recording everybody. Some of it's not very clear, but most of it is. So I record the doctors and the nurses in the, in the mental hospital. That's entertaining. <laughs> so they said, uh, you know, I'm, I was just trying to get, get by. You know, I was just being nice to people and, you know, I wasn't bugging the nurses or anything. It's like, that, I tried phoning the human rights tribunal and they went, they says, no, nothing to see here. Phone the United Nations. You know, nope, we, we don't deal with this kind of problem. <laughs> phone the Legion, phone uh, everybody. Nobody deals with this sort of problem. You know, I got a letter from the Joe Friday Public, Public Integrity, Integrity Commissioner of Canada saying, yeah, you were pretty much screwed over really bad, but you're in a gray area of being a ranger. We don't deal with that. I said, so I phoned him, I was like, who does? And his assistant says, we don't know who deals with your problems. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's a letter, like an actual letter from Joe Friday, which I'll, of course, give you. All of this stuff is available to you or whoever wants to investigate it. 
you know, it bothers me to keep talking about it, but someday I'll I'll stop it. I know you guys will do your part here. So, either way, I'm in the mental hospital, and uh, I'm recording the doctors and nurses. <laughs> it's Kirk, you're never gonna leave here if you don't start taking these antipsychotic medications. And whatever. I said, just let me talk to the doctor. Well, the doctor's an ex-military psychiatrist, so we all know we know what you're going through. He's like, I just want to get back to my son. Well, Kirk, we got to make sure you're healthy enough to do that. I was like, well take my evidence to the police and that's you know Kirk you don't really think they're out to get you and like I have they threatened me that I can prove it beyond a doubt well Kirk you're never gonna leave then <laughs> finally this other doctor comes in I can't remember his name but I you know he says what's going on I'm like well I'll try to report corruption I think I think you guys listen to that one but I'm just like I just want to get out of here and get back to my kid you know and he said, well, how can you prove this corruption? I was like, well, just give me my bag. I'm looking at it. <laughs> and I says, uh, I've recorded everything. And I says, I'm recording you right now. And he looked at me and he, he knew I wasn't lying. <laughs> he says, you don't have to be here anymore. Well, the next thing you know, he's talking to the military. And they're going to get someone to come and get me out. And they're going to give me my, my release. I said, well, as long as it's not a 5F. So either way, a captain comes over. Oh no, just before that, they, he gave me a couple hours out for a, a day walk or whatever. <laughs> so I get out and um, I'm like, you know, happy to be outside, but I didn't have any money or anything. So I'm walking and there's a liberal nom uh, nominee office. So I walk in there and I was like, I'd like to uh, let your boss know that uh, I can end his career and put him in prison. He says, what are you talking about? I said, well, give me your email. Bang, I sent you a couple emails. She's like, oh. <laughs> what does this have to do with it? I was like, well, I've caught them stealing millions of dollars to the Rangers. Who, Trudeau just bought $35 million worth of Tika 308s for them for 5,000 Rangers, like $5,000 a gun, whether you can buy it from Cabela's for 1500 bucks. Either way, that's another story. So either way, I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd like you to get this to the proper people and get them to call me. So I leave. There's an NDP office across the street. You know, like a block down. I was like, what are the odds? <laughs> I walk in there, and the lady's all happy to see me because I'm a veteran. I told her I'm a veteran. I'm trying to, you know, oh, good to see you, thank you. And by the time I was done telling her my little story, she was crying. She says, I, I, had, I started up the day just happy, and I'm just, you just destroyed me. I'm like, well, do the right thing and get this taken care of. So I go back to the mental hospital. I get picked up by, uh, by the captain and a second lieutenant who I've never met. And uh, they take me to Cabela's. <laughs> and they say, uh, uh, we're going to pick you up in an hour. <laughs> we're going to do some shopping at this mall by the ferry terminal. I'm like, yeah, sure. So I walked around for an hour and uh, met them back at the car. You know, I just got out of a mental hospital. <laughs> Supposed to be going to get released, trying to get home to my kid. I, You know, so I waited for them at the car and they came back. And I'm on the ferry and uh, I get a call from the police. And they're like, hey, hello, how are you doing? And I'm like, good. He's like, we got a call that you threatened uh, two two nomination offices. I'm like, threatened? Yeah, they said they recorded you, or uh, you came in there wearing full combat fatigues. <laughs> I don't even have full combat Whoa. fatigues. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, really? Uh, he says, do you still have your pal? I'm like, yeah. Can you give it to the officers? I'm like, sure, you know, whatever, you know. I don't give a shit. And I says, well, just so you know, I recorded them. I recorded him. <laughs> right on. Either way, we get to uh, CFB Squimo, and uh, the uh, captain or second lieutenant locks the keys in the car. <laughs> so we're at the military police, and they're trying to find someone to open the car for him. They phone a die buddy of mine, and he... After I was talking to the police, I said, look, I want to report this. Yep, no problem. And the guy... Nope. Nope. Nothing. I said, well, here's my briefcase. You know, take my USB drive, you know. Nope. I was like, well, I, I couldn't leave the USB drive because I didn't have a copy of it then, or the recording device. So I said, let's make a copy, you know, then it's done. Nope. So I left my bag there anyway. So here you go. <laughs> you know, I I actually left my, my son's uh, birth certificate in there, and I said, can I have my, that back? I phoned them like six months later. And he says, no, there's nothing in there of any value. 
<laughs> you know, the same papers. That, but but now yours is way worse because it's got astronomically worse the last three years. You know, I've been able to talk to a lot of politicians and a lot of politicians aren't doing anything about it. It's uh, not their problem. It's like, well, it is your problem. I mean, you're local. No, nope. started Saskatchewan. I was like, well, give me back to Saskatchewan. Let's deal with that there. You know, nope, no one will deal with it. And we're talking several politicians. The police were phoning me when I'm driving. Like, we hear you you have a gun. I'm like, yep. Where are you driving? Like, no, don't worry about it. Where are you? Well, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, how's your kid? I'm like, he's fine. Say hello, you know. I said, what's your, what's your last name? They went to him. What's your email? Click. Just like that. We're not talking one cop. But I went to Edmonton to report. First thing I did was phone the uh, uh, the RCMP in Edmonton. And uh, <clears throat> they came to the hotel and I looked like I was fucking a uh, crackhead because I was just stressed right out and agitated, you know. And I says, I'm going to report corruption in the military base. I'd like you guys to come with me. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? And yeah, he's like, well, you know, I got to get this dealt with and I'm, I think they'll, they'll try killing you. You know, I'm going to the same base where all my, my my commanders are, you know. Anyways, they said, no, we don't do that sort of thing. So I went there, and after I left that night, they got one RCMP pulled me back. and said, how to go today? I was like, not very good. I was like, you know, you want to help? And he's like, no. <laughs> like, my kid's five, you know, he's adorable. I'm looking like I'm crazy, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't help me. You know, just... So anyways, I get out of the mental hospital. Uh, oh yeah, right, after after I, I report at the military base, um, they take me to a hotel and uh, they say, we'll pick you up for supper. We'll take you, there's a little restaurant bar down there. So they bought me a couple of drinks. <laughs> I'm supposed to be an alcoholic, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, whatever. But uh, get me a, you know, a meal. And uh, okay, well, here's these papers. Cause they, they didn't have time to get them from the office and it says right on there 5f release i'm like i'm not signing a 5s release which is unsuitable for future service because that's not me i'm still pretty much bang on you know not on paper <laughs> either way i wouldn't sign it and they're like kirk do you want some company tonight and these are two women right i was like what are you gonna get me one of your cousins to visit me or something like what the fuck are you asking me that for i was like no i just want to get home to my my son there's well here's fifty dollars you can catch a cab in the morning and uh, catch a plane ride. So I, I I order the cab, they leave, I, and I didn't sign the 5F release, but someone did for me. <laughs> Either way, I uh, fly back to Bella Bella. First thing I do is get my kid, and go back to my truck, because I was living in the back of my truck. And the kids come up, he's like, Kirk, how come all the cops were rooting through your truck for a couple of days? I'm like, oh, you're looking for grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't have, they were just smoke grenades. Nobody knew that. They all thought they were real grenades. But... Either way, I'm back in Bella Bella. I go to the doctor that sent me away, and she was very surprised to see me. <laughs> she says, well, What are you doing back so soon? Because it's supposed to be 21 days. I was back in 13. They released me without a tribunal. They had a lawyer come see me. He's like, Yeah, you know, you'll have to go to a tribunal. Just try to stay cool until for the 21 days, and we'll see if you're taking your medications I'm like uh, I said they're not here to help me he's like no I don't think they are <laughs> but um, it says in their lawyer because it's on one of the recordings but um, <clears throat> either way I get back get my kid and I try to live life and then uh, I find out that uh, Fisher the RCMP here phoned the uh, hunters uh or the firearms officer in Saskatchewan and asked for me to have, have my license suspended. So he applied for that October 1st. October 1st is when Lieutenant Colonel Meads uh, released me from the military with no meetings, no tribunal, no, you know, how is your career? <laughs> Either way, Mr. Meads is one of the people I re reported. I didn't find out till later, like six months later, when I got the firearms officer, uh, his correspondence, he said, the three people I reported, Jim Searson, Lindsey Blair, and Lieutenant Colonel Meads all reported me for saying I was uh, a risk. You know, even the judge, when we went to trial here, I wasn't allowed uh, a, 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 a lawyer. You know, the, I said, well, cancel it or s suspend it or pr 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 uh, 
postpone it until I can get a lawyer. Well, up here, there's not many lawyers, right? The lawyer in town won't touch me because I don't deal with anything that crazy. <laughs> but, uh, I said, okay, well, it's suspended, and I'll, I'll try to get one up here. So they said, yeah, okay, it's canceled. I said, you know what? I'm not very lucky these days. I better go check. So I went to the courthouse, and uh, they just called my name. And they're like, oh, <laughs> do you have a lawyer? I'm like, no, I can't get one. I tried to, I tried to have it uh, postponed. He says, well, it's not going to get postponed because the officer's retiring. <laughs> yeah, so either way, I told him my story, and that's the one you have to get the copies of through the Freedom of Information Act. And the judge says that we have no, I have letters from the, some of the elders and the uh, hereditary chiefs saying Kurt's no problem, he's staying here, he's a great guy, you know, his kids are welcome, him, he's welcome, thank God for those letters and stuff. The judge says that we have no issues with you, uh, but we don't want you to have your guns because of your military training. I'm like, I trained them, <laughs> you know, I was shooting yeah. since I was a kid, my yeah. grandfather taught me first aid, a World War II veteran, you know. Like he, he fought, and that's another thing. Like my dad was in the Rangers, my grandfather was in the army in World War II, and he fought for our country. And I couldn't let him down, you know. And I just, I still can't, and that's why I've been for four years now trying to get my story out there. Either way, uh, they released me. I didn't find out until November twentieth. Um, oh yeah. So when I was in in uh, Lieutenant Colonel Meade's office, they sent me a check. I got got it uh, in no, like November. <laughs> it took a long time to get. As soon as they deposited that check, they seized my account, and that was a Remembrance Day. I remember that. I was like, I went to use my bank card and seized. <laughs> well, that's how weird it was. But either way, and then I found out on the twenty second I was released because uh, Veterans Affairs said, "Well, no, you're released," but no one told me. So they said, "Well, Kirk, uh, you got to apply for your for some benefits." I'm like, "Well, sure." So. I try of course I had no phone because I all my phones got erased and and you know my phone numbers were cancelled with the bills paid like just no phone I'm in the middle of nowhere you can't even buy a phone here <laughs> but either way I was making make do um, and then uh, uh, yeah so it's okay well you have dyslimia uh, de mild depression <laughs> I'm like, the slimy, is that what you call it, eh? Wow. And I says, whatever. Well, the slimy is like $110,000. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, that's enough to start somewhat, because I thought I'd still get this money back for 350000 they seized. But uh, either way, they sent it to my bank, and I thought I'd have money for Christmas. They said, you'll have it in your bank by December 22nd, I think it was. One check, it's nothing, nothing. Phone, they said, no, we sent it. Check the bank. They seized it. <laughs> well, so that's quite a bit of money they've been seizing. Anyways, I phoned them back and I was like, no, it's seized. Oh, well, sorry about Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, I think they resent it about mid January or something. And I said, I don't really want your money, I want my money. I gave most of it away to people that needed it. I bought my kid's mother a vehicle so she could come visit with my daughter twice a year. I said, I'll buy you a brand new SUV, just bring my daughter here twice a year, you know. She never did. Long story. I lent people money that I knew I'd never see it back again. I was like, I don't want this money. It's not right, you know. <laughs> want to get your Kirk to explain the story a little closer about your godparents and their connection with the Liberal Party and their connection with, I think one of them, I think Jim took over as CEO of, uh, uh, of the Rangers, didn't he, after you were no, let go? he was. And then and explain the money part too. Okay. And, and uh, well, the corruption on that end. Yeah, Jim, Jim was the patrol commander. You know, and Lindsay was too, I see, and I was a section leader, which is great. You know, you got 10, 10 12 guys working for you. You know, we, we were a really efficient team, my, my section, you know. A lot of people, they were only out for the, for the money, but we didn't really care about that. But, um, yeah, every, we got paid cash, $200 a day for a truck, $100 a day for a quad, or $200 a day for a quad or a sled, $100 a day for a trailer, for example, stuff like that. When we first started, it was only $100 a day. But like I said, when I went to the Comox military police, they said, Kirk, it was $200 a day since 2008. So they started us off wrong getting $100 a day. So that's a lot of money laundering right there. And we all signed, signed cash, like paint, like uh, we signed blank sheets for it. Untraceable cash money. He'd, he'd bring ammo boxes full of $100 bills. Either way, 
there's that and then um every two years you have to have an election to st try to stop this uh corruption from happening because that's a lot of money you know a guy can get involved in that but they recommend that the two ic's second in command takes over for the for the patrol commander but i was pretty sure i would have been elected for patrol commander and i wasn't putting up with this anymore um <coughs> so you know jimmy says I have to be patrol commander to get this $16 million for Tammy. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it turns out he had to be patrol commander so they could start another patrol in Tammy's hometown of Stanley Mission, which is 80 kilometers away. And our radius is over 100 with rangers. That, that's fine, you know, so they were in our radius. But they, they said, well, let's start a ranger patrol here. I'm like, no, start it in uh, Pine House where they, they're farther away. Either way, so they start started one there where there's way more chances to launder way more money. And, uh, you know, uh, Tommy was running for the Liberal Party. She's nom nominated. And she's in the middle of a fraud investigation. Because so I phoned the military police in Dunder, and they're trying to investigate. Well, all they ever asked me is, Kirk, where are you? You know, where's your, what's your phone number? We have to phone you. I was like, give me your phone number <laughs> and give me your email, and I will contact you at a certain time because I don't want to be located. Meanwhile, all this time I have warrant officers and whoever, where are you, Kirk? Where are you, Kirk? You can't run forever. I'm like, why would I have to run, you know? Kirk, just turn yourself in, we can help you. Well, when I turned myself in, I got fucking arrested. <laughs> you know? So either way, there's, like, like I said, there's a lot of money that's available there. None of it's traceable. Uh, Jimmy then became, uh, uh, he, got a, he got a job at the Red Cross. You know, he took some courses online and stuff and went to university for whatever, for native governance. Then all of a sudden, he's in charge of the Red Cross. And he says, Kirk, I can write my own checks. <laughs> I'm like, good for you. Like, isn't that the power couple? Head of the Red Cross and the head of the, and the Rangers and the, and the chief, band, the chief, or band chief. She, you know, she was the chief of the Little Orange Band? Yeah. Isn't that the ultimate power couple wow. for laundering money? And I, I phoned the Green Light Committee. And I, uh, I said, look, I'm or they're under investigation. He says, you can send us anything you want if you think it's going to help. You do, you know? Know, do you know about any chiefs having to sign, sign on to uh, so they could impose the Emergencies Act on the, on the people in Ottawa or, or the people of Canada? Oh, she was all over that, you know, given uh, bribe, like trying to bribe her people to get vaccine, you know, $100, $200, $300, go get your vaccine if, you, if you're treating, you know. I couldn't believe it. You know, you can win free furniture, you know, free bucket of chicken with every shot, you know. It's just, and to th some people that have nothing, $300 is a lot of money, you it know. Is, it is. You know, and I, I, I've had nothing, 300 bucks is a lot of money. But, uh, yeah, I don't know anything about signing anything, but I know that she was all over Facebook saying that, you know, everyone has to get the shot uh, or else she can't go to the band office. <laughs> you can't go to the community hall. If you don't get vaccinated, you have to show proof of vaccine to go to a concert like the a powwow or anything. You know, that's all. That's on Facebook. That's first Facebook, right? Yeah, and we don't even know if they're really vaccinated. Were, were they? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Like, yeah. Probably not. So you don't know anything about the Emergencies Act? How she she said to sign on? No, I don't know anything. About that. Okay, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know anything about politics. Really, I didn't know what left or right is. Um. I didn't know the difference between liberals and conservatives. I've never been, you know, I'm not, I just be nice to everybody and be, do no harm and help exactly. your fellow man, right? Like, Cause no harm or damage, exactly. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, when we pray, my son, we play to for protect the children and defend the defenseless and help the helpless. Right. And if you can't do that, God, then let me, you know? And, there you go. and he says the same thing. And uh, Amber now, like it's just a miracle I got Amber here after three years, like I never saw her for mm -hmm. three years. No phone contact, you know, send money and I'll let you talk to her sort of thing. <laughs> I just wanted to say the country needs more people like you. Yeah, well, they need a lot of less people like the politicians. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly, but, exactly. But either way, this uh, civilian review committee, they lost all my records for two years when I complained to, about the uh, RCMP. Then after three years, they say, you know what? You didn't tie them out. You can have an investigation. So the police here said well we're going to only investigate fisher arresting you here and i sent him enough stuff with the letters from the uh hunter you know the firearms officer and 
Lieutenant Colonel Meads, you know, all this stuff that's painfully obviously it's wrongdoing. And he says, since you've seen the letter, we see nothing wrong. And I says, yeah. and he says, we're not going to investigate anything that happened anywhere else. That's not our job. I'm like, whose job is it then? You know, is there another RCMP? So I recently, I, I just got that letter like a couple weeks ago. So I phoned or I emailed the civilian review complaints committee and they haven't responded back yet. But, you know, hopefully, like, I would love to give all this information to the police as someone I can trust, you know. But I don't think there's anyone out there. You know, the head of the police in the ranch or the of Saskatchewan was uh, Russell Meads. I mean, sorry, Russell uh, Morasti. We had coffee every two days in the motor end. I told him about my problem with corruption, and he says, you got to report it to the uh, RCMP Ombudsman. Well, after that, my life turned to shit, you know. <clears throat> and then, yeah. he, then he, he goes from retirement into being the Lieutenant Governor of, of Saskatchewan. I think, I, think, I think pretty much any government employees sworn an oath of allegiance <coughs> and secrecy, and I know there's four oaths that the RCMP... Uh, yeah, we had ours too, but our, our creed says we have to give our information to the proper authorities. Right. Get all of the information, and I think I sent it to you, Yeah. and there's, you know, gather information, give it to us. I did everything I was supposed to do, but I was the only one. Right. And it makes me look like a crazy person, but, you know, sure, I love Canada, I love people, you know. That's it. That's it. And the, what, you know, that's, that's, that's what should matter in this country. Yeah, you know, like if I was anybody else that was weaker in the mind or something, or on drugs, or, you know, with any problems, I probably would have killed myself a long time ago. And that's what they were trying to get me to do. That's why I actually I have emails saying, yeah. Kirk, just kill yourself, you know? <laughs> that's why you, that's why you're a threat because you're a real person and you yeah. care about the country well, and, you, and you and you and you got morals and you and you got a soul you know not one not one of them knows that I have this uh, all these recordings but they also know that I'm very honest so they know I have the recordings they just haven't seen any and I wasn't going to release any to this RCMP because he right. already said the last RCMP that was here we recorded he said he knows Lieutenant Colonel Meads he knows the Sergeant Major he knows Searson he knows the Chief. And then he says, we're not report, or we're not going to uh, investigate anything. You know, we have him recorded saying that. Well, yeah. And that's, fuck. <laughs> you know, they know I don't have any guns, but I'm a, living in a pretty inaccessible <clears throat> place. And the people here love us. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, and we're, you know, but we got to survive. So we got to move the ship and make a, make a living, you know. We can, you know, can't live on love and political promises that's for sure, that's for sure. <laughs> no. yeah is there any questions nick you got or anything i think that's pretty good but like all right that's to be honest i i have no problem going under oath and i told them a long time ago put me under lie detector put me under any well, except that drug you know but to put me a polygraph anything i can prove everything i'm not a liar yeah, we basically want to show the level mm -hmm. of corruption in, in all departments, goes, all, go, all government departments. It goes all the way up, yeah. And uh, from top to bottom and... Uh, I said start know. I said start with Trudeau and work your way down. <laughs> That's I, Actually, when I was driving away, I was like, I don't know what your political agendas are, and that was three years ago or four years ago, but I'm not in, I'm not having any part of it, you know. But they had to get all, the, all of the non-native peoples out of the rangers from the Mirage Patrol, start another one in Stanley Mission, it's Which just, is 80 KOA, right? Yeah, it's just, miles it just makes no sense to have one so close. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we did our, our boating exercises right there. Like, we know the area too, you know. But there's a lot of money changing hands, and it's untraceable. And the blank piece of paper you're signing, were they, they just like a white blank sheet? No, no, it, it had like how much uh, days we had your truck, snow machine, whatever, uh, signed here. And then I saw the real one, and it was like a real... But then they, on the grievances, they said... Uh, every patrol can make their own. You know, you got to read the responses. Oh yeah, the election was fake, but you're still screwed. You know, I I phoned to get uh, mental help, and they uh, they wouldn't give me a, a number to call. You know, my patrol commander and the two IC. They, I phoned. I had a RCMP member on, in my section, and he, I told him he's like, "What the hell is going on?" Because he was at the range with us too, and he's like, "This is what they're trying to have me off." And he's like, "You have to report this." I'm like, so I phoned in nine one one. Uh, December 28th or 20th after the, they had uh, the meeting to say Kirk's no longer a ranger which but the, Sar the sergeant major said Kirk is a ranger but he just has to report this you know so I'm still doing my last task tasking but I phoned 911 and I told him the story about my two, uh, Lindsay Blair driving around 
Saskatchewan with his handguns in his car because he has uh, uh, permits for every firing range in, on the route, right? So he, that, that justifies him. And I was like, I was worried for him. I was worried that night. I slept with my 45, you know, because uh, this is career ending for everybody I've mentioned. I thought it was. I thought it'd be five, you know, five, four or five days. And then he, I didn't think it was this bad, you know. I didn't. I thought maybe there was a, another excuse for the money laundering, you know. I do in the back of my head. <coughs> well, look at the political parties now. They're all still rolling around. They, 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 it's yeah. been proven they've stolen and laundered billions and billions of dollars, taking money from Canadian people. Yeah. And they're still going, so. But I mean, this, this is going to expose a bit more of it than... Well, I hope it does. And like I know, said, I would love to be proven wrong. There's yeah. not anything I can be proven wrong on. Or else they would have done it a long time ago. They've yeah. slandered my name. They have fake Facebooks attacking me all the time. Yeah. You know, they phone the police. They phone anybody who... Like, they phone my dad, you know? <laughs> wow. You know, that's how bad they are. You know, my, <clears throat> it drove half my, my family crazy, you know? It just My son, I haven't seen him for four years, you know? I haven't seen, I haven't met my granddaughters, you know, you know, they're three years old now. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty sad stuff. Like, but they're taking away the best years that I'm supposed to be a grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's a good thing. Like I, I kept it together and I, like they, this doctor that I've never met psychologically evaluated me. He says, we're, we question Kirk's ability to parent. I'm like I've never met the guy. How the hell can they question my ability to parent? When I got released from the mental hospital, they sent someone from social services over, and I showed her a few pieces of paper. She's like, "We have no problem with you raising your kid," <laughs> you know. But to everyone else, I'm back chick crazy. Thirty-three percent more likely to get shot by an RCMP or police. Thirty-three percent more likely to kill myself. Right, right. Yeah, and thirty-three percent more likely to be involved in a homicide. Oh, well, that's the other thing is they they said I was had a grave illness. The military did. So I was able to cash out my civilian pension, and that's how I was able to buy this boat. You know, I have $235 left, I told Janice, don't worry about it, all we have to do is get back up here and we can make a living. We just needed the place to live. Like I was living in the back of my truck, we bought a boat that sunk and I fixed it up and we were living in it then, and then I bought another boat that was broke down, and there, you know, we lived in that, and then we needed something a little bigger. We, we locked out on this, like I think God loves us, and. God or aliens or whoever, karma for sure. Karma, karma, brother. Yeah, wow. and uh, like there's no way I gotta pull this off myself. And Janice, you know, just a savior for us. And my kids are doing excellent in school. They're straight A's, exceeding expectations and everything. And they question my ability to parent just because I reported wrongdoing. Well, you, got, you, <laughs> you got you got good character, and karma's gonna work against them too. I mean, uh, anybody that's had anything to do with the destruction of this country is gonna pay in the end. And we well, know I don't know what's gonna happen, but I. Like, I'm doing everything I can, and that's what I swore to do. Oh, and we thank you for your service, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it's funny. They they gave everyone these awards, or these medals. They didn't give me mine. No? <laughs> I had to I had to uh, post something on Facebook. I'm like, where the hell is mine? I was the fir I, jo I was the joined the first day. You know, I've been on so many exercises, but my whole history is erased. Everything's erased. Yeah, well, the bookkeeper that does the books in, in, <clears throat> in at CFE Edmonton is from the Raj. Her last name's Ross, and she's like, it's just the picture perfect scam. If you have a corrupt person, or two or three, but to have like 10 or 20 is pretty hard to do unless you're very certain you're never going to get caught. The whole group works together, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Except for one. Yeah, and one, 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 <laughs> one bad seed, as they say. Yeah, they which, which you're actually the good seed. Yeah. yeah. I thought my friends would back me up on it, but they're like, Kurt, they threatened us, you know, then they bribed them. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I'm uncorruptible like that. Like, yeah, you're not the only one it's happening to, more than likely. Yeah. But more of you guys should get together. I can't. Yeah. Uh, I can't reach anybody. I can't get emails. I can't get phone calls. Like, you guys had to come here. Thank goodness for, for that. You know. Mm -hmm. Like, if yeah. I didn't have a couple bucks kicking around, this would never get out. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Absolutely. But money well spent and Godspeed. Yeah. You, bet, you bet your man. Yeah, absolutely. With other um, veterans, I meant. If I've tried veterans for, v for freedom or whatever. For says, we don't accept rangers. He says I have enough to bring the political system of Canada down. He says we don't we don't accept rangers. You're not considered military. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that's so sad. But is there anything else? That's it, my friend. Okay, well, thanks. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you're good. That's yeah. a wrap. Beautiful. Thank you. That yeah. was fucking Thank awesome, you very buddy. Much. <laughs> It's yeah. going to be good, man. We're going to yeah. put it out there, brother. We're going to put it out there, buddy.
Like I yeah. said, they can question me for anything. Your old man did great. <laughs> Your old man did great. Here, here, we're still recording here. So everybody knows we're legit. Oh. <laughs> there he is. Hey. There's Kirk over here. Kirk's over here. Yeah. Your better half. Everybody knows. Sharon's right there. Everybody <laughs> knows this guy, here. right? He told Freeland where to go. <laughs> we're going to we're, we're put these guys in their place, guys. It's time this stopped in this country. The corruption is deep, 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 deep. And the only and, and whenever somebody gets let go in the in, in the in legislature mm -hmm. or any political party, it's because they spoke up and had a voice the same as Kirk did with the Rangers in Canada here, trying to do good for the country and look after the people. And and he's got a big heart. And uh, it's time it stopped, guys. And it's time this infighting and bullshit stopped in this country, especially with the freedom movement. It's time we take this country back. And enough's enough. And we got to do our thing, you know. One and then this thing. this gentleman here, I mean, uh, he, he said it all. I mean, that's 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 the facts. Is one more thing is, uh, you know, Admiral Norman, Admiral yeah. for the, the whole fleet, and he he had his career ruined. He's at the top of the food chain, and yeah. I'm a ranger. I'm the very lowest yeah. form in the military, and I have enough to put Truro in prison. Can you yeah. imagine what all those other guys know? So it actually it actually shows that the yeah. like you said, Admiral Norman was top 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 top. Yep. Like full credentials, man, uh, awards, uh, you know, medals and this and that. And uh, it shows you that people, all the people at the top aren't corrupted, aren't corruptible. you got to have a heart and a soul and care about this country and the people. If you don't have that, you shouldn't even be in office. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yep. Right on, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Right on.